The Triple Protection of the Tomb of Jesus Number 1. The Stone According to the Bible, a large stone was rolled in front of the tomb where Jesus was laid to rest. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a fresh linen cloth, and placed it in a newly carved tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Matthew 27 verses 59 to 60, Amplified Bible. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, burial wrapping, and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had cut in the rock. And he rolled a large stone over the entrance of the tomb and went away. Joseph of Arimathea, a rich man and member of Sandarin, had not concurred in the council's decision to deliver Jesus to Pilate. Luke 23 verse 51 He had not consented to the council's plan and action. A man from Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who was waiting for and expecting the kingdom of God. If he had been a covert disciple up to this point, he now cast all caution to the wind and revealed himself. He approached Pilate with courage and asked for permission to bury his Lord. Pilate granted his request. We need to put ourselves in Pilate's shoes and try to comprehend the reaction of the Jewish people when they learned that a member of the Sandarin had taken a public stance in support of the people who was crucified. When Joseph laid Jesus to rest in the tomb, he may have been burying himself in more ways than one, including on the social and religious levels. Pilate permitted Joseph to embalm the body, and Joseph did so with great care by wrapping it in a fresh linen cloth and placing spices in between the wrappings. Then he placed it in his own new tomb, carved out of solid rock. The mouth of the tomb was closed by a large stone, shaped like a millstone and standing on its edge in a channel also carved out of stone, centuries before Isaiah had predicted. His grave was assigned with the wicked, but he was with a rich man in his death. Because he had done no violence, nor was there any deceit in his mouth. Isaiah 53 verse 9, Amplified Bible. His adversaries undoubtedly devised a plot to dispose of his body by casting it into the Valley of Hinnom, where it would be incinerated in garbage fires or devoured by foxes. But God overruled their intentions and used Joseph to ensure that Jesus was buried alongside the wealthy. This stone not only helped to close off the entrance to the tomb, but it also made it more difficult for anyone to walk in there and take the body. He came into a world from a virgin's womb. Now he was set in a virgin tomb. No body had ever been set in that tomb, so there was no possible confusion as to which body came forth. We read, He rolled a large stone against the door of the tomb. This was the conventional method for securing a wealthy individual's tomb. A wealthy man like Joseph of Arimathea most likely had a tomb carved into the solid rock. John 19 verse 41, Amplified Bible. Now there was a garden at the place where he was crucified, and in the garden a new tomb cut out of solid rock in which no one had yet been laid. The tomb would typically have a narrow entrance and possibly one or more compartments where the body of those who had been partially mummified with spices, ointments, and linen strips could be laid out. After allowing the bodies to decompose on their own for a period of time that could range from a few years to several decades, Jewish tradition dictated that the skeletal remains be stored in a container made of stone and given the name ossuary. The ossuary remained in the tomb with the remains of other family members. The entrance to the tomb was typically a heavy circular-shaped stone that ran in a groove and settled down into a channel. Because of these features, the door could not be moved unless multiple strongmen worked together to do so. 
This was done to ensure that the remains of the person would not be disturbed in any way. The usual mode of shutting the door of the tomb, the Jews called the stone galal, the roller. Joseph probably did not like the fact that the value of his family tomb decreased because the Romans decided to crucify people nearby. However, this serves to remind us that the power of the cross and the resurrection are always permanently connected and closely connected in God's plan. Tombs like this were very costly. It was quite a sacrifice for Joseph of Arimathea to give his up. However, Jesus would only use it for a few days. Number 2. The Roman Seal In addition, the tomb was sealed with the Roman Emperor's seal. They went to the cemetery and secured the grave, and along with the watchman, they placed a seal on the headstone. Matthew 27 verse 66, Amplified Bible. So they went and made the tomb secure, and along with stationing a guard of soldiers to be on watch, they set a seal on the stone. The presence of the seal served as authentication that the tomb was in use, and the power and authority of Rome was visible in the presence of the seal. Anyone who was caught breaking the Roman seal would be put to a horrible death as the punishment for their crime. Pilate answered, You have a guard. Go your way. Make it as secure as you know how. They gave it their best effort. They put a seal on the stone and posted guards, but despite their best efforts, the security measures were not sufficient. We read, sealing the stone and setting the guard. This details the procedures that were followed to ensure the safety of Jesus' tomb. If there were enough disciples, it would be possible to roll away the stone. However, they would not do so quietly. Besides, they would have to work together to roll it away, and that didn't seem likely. The tomb was secured by a seal, which was an obstacle of human authority. The seal was a rope, overlapping the width of the stone covering the entrance to the tomb. On either side of the doorway, there was a glob of wax securing the rope over the stone. You were unable to move the rock because doing so would break the seal. It was essential that the guards be present during the process of sealing because it was their responsibility to take care of whatever was being sealed. These Roman guards would keep a close eye on the process of sealing the stone because they were aware that their jobs and possibly even their lives were on the line. The Roman seal carried legal authority. It was more than just yellow tape barricading a modern crime scene. Breaking a Roman seal was a direct challenge to the authority of the Romans. The authority of the Roman Empire was responsible for protecting that stone. Number 3. The Guard A guard stood watch over the tomb of Jesus. This was the Jewish Temple Police. Matthew 27 verses 65 to 66. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go with them. Make a tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure. And along with stationing a guard of soldiers to be on watch, they set a seal on the stone. We read, Command that the tomb be made secure. You have a guard. Make it as secure as you know how. This demonstrates that both the Jewish leaders and the Romans were well aware of the necessity to guard the tomb and that they took all necessary measures to secure it. These security precautions served only to provide further evidence of the miraculous nature of the resurrection. If the tomb of Jesus was not guarded, it is possible that the body of Jesus was taken by an unknown person or persons and it would be difficult to disprove this theory. However, due to the fact that the tomb was so carefully watched over, we are able to be certain that his body was not taken. You have a guard, was Pilate's promise to supply a Roman guard. The tomb was secured by a guard, 
which was an obstacle of human strength. A typical Roman guard had four soldiers. While the others rested, the other two kept watch. This guard may have had more. The soldiers would have everything they needed to fight, including a sword, shield, spear, dagger, and armor. It is important to keep in mind that these individuals were Roman soldiers. They didn't care about Jesus or Jewish laws or rituals. They were called to secure the tomb of somebody they thought was a criminal. To them, the only sacred thing at this tomb was the Roman seal, because if that were broken, their careers were ruined and they might be executed themselves. Each member was responsible for six square feet of space. The guard members could not sit down or lean against anything while they were on duty. If a guard member fell asleep, he was beaten and burned with his own clothes, but he was not the only one executed. The entire 16-man guard unit was executed if only one of the members fell asleep while on duty. The religious leaders felt secure. Because of these precautions, the religious rulers felt secure that the excitement around Jesus would soon subside. Jesus lay dead in the tomb, and his frightened disciples had scattered and gone into hiding. As a result, they thought they had won. The event that changed the world. But that was not the end of the story. According to the Bible, a group of women went to the tomb early on Sunday morning to anoint Jesus' body. It was no longer possible to find the body because the stone had been moved, the seal had been broken, and the body was gone. Luke 24 verses 4 to 6, New King James Version. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then, as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee. They went back to tell the other disciples, who at first did not believe their report. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles, and their words seemed to them like idle tales, and they did not believe them. Luke 24 verses 10 to 11. However, they were convinced to look for themselves, and like everyone else, they discovered that the tomb was empty. This caused them confusion. The commotion ended when the resurrected Christ first appeared to Mary Magdalene, then to a few other women, and lastly to the disciples. Jesus ascended into heaven after spending 40 days with his disciples. Ten days later, the disciples publicly proclaimed to all Jerusalem and to the world the fact that Jesus Christ had risen from the dead. Although the religious leaders experienced a sense of satisfaction when they handed Jesus over to Pontius Pilate to be crucified, they did not forget the prophecy that Jesus had made regarding his resurrection after death. None of these obstacles mattered. They are all destroyed in his presence. The resurrected Jesus is able to overcome physical barriers that stand in his way. Human authority doesn't stand before the resurrected Jesus. When compared to the power of the resurrected Jesus, human strength is nothing.